Hello, nurses. This is Kevin with nursingcamp.com, and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. Today's focus is on cardiac lecture number 30, our heart failure overview to pave the way. All right, let's get into it. I can be found on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, nursingcamp.com as nursing camp. Okay. Oops. Now, heart failure. So let's talk about the structure of the heart. And it's from my sticky note. It's pretty exhaustive, this sticky note. Um, but I'm breaking it up into little pieces. You know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And that's what we're going to kind of do. Is we're going to look at heart failure and we're going to look at all these kind of contents. Um, but that's the overall, everything you need to know on heart failure is on the sheet found on nursing camp. All right. Let's talk about the heart. So the heart is uh, structural, right? So it's a big muscle. And the interesting thing about the heart is that when it's functioning fine, we have good cardiac output. And cardiac output, as I talked about in a previous lecture, is um, you do this, you put an eight there, and then that becomes your eight, and half of eight is four. So cardiac output is four to eight liters per minute. And you have an ejection fraction, and that's the volume of heart, of blood, that is ejected out of the heart. And that ejection fraction is um, needs to be greater than 60-65%. If it is less than 65%, the patient will become symptomatic. All right, what do I mean with symptomatic? Right or left side, heart failure. So also called CHF. Well, CHF, congestive heart failure, is separated into two different parts, right and left. So you have right-sided heart failure. And we said previously that a right-sided problem is generally chronic, and left side, or lungs, is acute. The reason it's acute is because of this left side pumps oxygenated blood. And if it's not pumping out, it's building up into the lungs. And that makes them uh, have crackles. All right. So the concept is this, is that when you have CHF, um, it's all about your blood and perfusion. So when we look at perfusion, we think of a blood tube. And a blood tube is separated into uh, three different elements. All right, up here's your plasma, which is about 55%. I think a 55 inch plasma TV. Uh, Buffy coat, which is a white, fluffy, buffy white, that's less than 1% volume. And then 45% is your uh, formed elements, like your RBCs, your albumin, and stuff like that. Okay, platelets. All right, so what's in here? This is the kitchen sink. And that kitchen sink is the fluid portion. All right. Well, in order to have cardiac output that's normal, um, how do I know it's normal? Well, the mean arterial pressure, right, needs to be greater than 65%. If it is greater than 65%, we can maintain in the vessels this hemodynamic, 55-45%. Okay? So, but you need to have good cardiac output. You need to have a good pumping heart. And that's the problem with CHF. It's a pumping problem. And that is caused by either, which we talked about in our previous lecture, lecture 29, an MI, that caused actual tissue damage to this ventricle, or down here. It depends on where the MI is. Meanwhile, the heart isn't going to pump. And so you're going to have decrease cardiac output. If you have decreased cardiac output, you can't maintain this 55-45%, and then the fluid starts to uh, build up. And that fluid um, of the vessels starts to fill up. Well, the problem is the vessels don't like to, to uh, be like this. It means it wants to maintain 55-45%. But if the heart isn't pumping, it's not getting out, it can't get to the kidneys and perfuse out and get urine output. 
the zero output is normally 30 cc's an hour. Okay. So that's our normal pr premise. Well, the problem is, is that it's not pumping enough to keep perfusion going. And so what happens is it starts to fill up. So think of it like this fluid right here becomes 65% more fluid in the plasma than normally. Well, the body doesn't like that. And so what happens is, is that diapedesis, the, the fluid starts to seep out. Okay. And depending on where it is, it either will go to the, uh, the right or left. All right. So if, if it's left side of failure, it's going to seep out where the lungs are. And that's why you hear crackles. You can hear them because, but they can't cough them up because it's not in the vascular space. It's outside ECF. Okay. And on the right side, what happens is, is that it starts to build up in the uh, in the body so when you're looking at the person and they have um, right-sided heart failure and all the heart that the, the fluid that wants to come in isn't 55 45 they have bad a bad right-sided heart pump so it starts to build up back here and it goes 65 percent well the problem with that is you start to get JVD, venous, jugular venous distension. You also start to get uh, edema. You get nauseous because of everything gets congested in the hepatosmegaly. So the liver, the spleen, they start to uh, engorge and get kind of waterlogged. And then you get nauseous when that starts to happen. So you start to see shunting going on. Um, but it doesn't back up to the, to the lungs. But when it does back on the right, like on the left side, so that's right-sided. So I'm digressing a little bit. So right-sided is all this stuff. So I like to call it right is the rest, rest of the body. Right? It's acute because all this volume of fluid starts backing up into the heart but the body starts a third space all right so what do we do well we try to give them to get the fluid off um and so we give something like lasix or bumex and i'll cover that more in the next lecture but on the left side of the heart it's the same problem that's on the right but the biggest issue on the left side is lungs crackles so you start to hear crackles with CHF, that's left-sided heart. That patient needs to be um, immediately upright. Okay, upright. And they need um, to be, uh, they need Lasix, upright. They might get high flow oxygen. We'll talk more about that when we differentiate right versus left-sided. But that's a general overview. It's all about fluid. So when you're looking at CHF, it's either an exacerbation or not. The cause of CHF can be from a lot of different causes. Um, it could be uh, an MI like we just talked about. In the next lecture, we're going to talk about the valves causing uh, um, a uh, heart failure and, um, and what that does to the heart with um, hypertrophy and uh, cardiomyopathy. All right, my name is Camp, and this is Nursing Camp. I can be found on all these social media channels as nursingcamp.com, and um, that's about it. So nurse on, we'll see you next time. Bye.